I have seen him perform. Uh, he's a regular here at the Corner Lounge. You're going to love his style of comedy. Please give it up for the very funny Mr. John Tay. Thank you very much, and Dave and I are very different people. Already, only a few minutes, and I can be cocky. I've got a lot to cover, so uh, let's whack on to this, shall we? <laughs> Gonna kind of keep it real tonight, and first of all, I'd like to thank Peter Hudson for putting on the show for Mental Health Awareness on Saturday. This kind of has a bit of a near year thing to me, because, well, I was diagnosed as a manic depressive shortly before entering college. Just glad I wasn't uh, hypercontract as well, because that would really suck thinking that you're dying all the time and not being disappointed that you're not. <laughs> <laughs> they actually changed the terminology of manic depression to bipolar in the 90s. And this is something I've never abided by, not down with this term, because really the only bi I am is curious. <laughs> Yeah, so I had a guy suck my cock a few weeks ago. <laughs> and I gotta say, I'm not a fan. <laughs> now, uh, full disclosure, uh, we were super drunk and pretty high. He really wanted to, and I kind of wanted the story. <laughs> Other people are going to be here talking about taking their kids to the beach or maybe going off to the ball game. I put my cock on the line for a $5 ticket, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I would have thought it would have been like a whole, bet, whole lot better. Because, you know, he's got the parts. But I was completely taken out of the moment, like just after like a few seconds. Maybe because it was like sloppy. Maybe because his wig kind of moved. <laughs> Maybe because I'm not gay. <laughs> I don't rollerblade. I don't own a Miata. <laughs> but you ought to. And I'm thinking, I may actually have my guy in shell shock right now. Because it's been like three weeks since I've mastered it. I have not taken myself to task. I have not cast genocide down the shower drain. <laughs> and trust me, like this is completely out of character because when it comes to jerking off, I'm a child savant. <laughs> like when I was like yay high, I accidentally walked in on my mom's ex, like tugging one out. We made eye contact, it was all kind of tense. He was able to completely defuse the situation immediately, he told me not to worry. It's natural. Besides, I'd be doing the same thing soon enough anyway. After all, his arm was getting tired. So. <laughs> oh my god. Just keeping it real. Too real. Too real. I can't tell you that the first time I actually tried stand-up was almost my last time. It was back when I was in college. I hit an open mic that was on campus. And really, almost as soon as I hit the stage, this loud, rather swarthy woman in the background kept on screaming, You're not funny! You're not funny! And honestly, after only about two minutes, I left the stage completely mortified. It was a terrible experience. To the point that I'm driving home and I'm literally shaking behind the wheel. I was almost in tears. So I looked over at my girlfriend and said, Babe, if you ever embarrass me like that again. <laughs> 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 no surprises, I am a single guy. Single long enough almost to look forward to jury duty just so I can like meet some new people. <laughs> like, you know it's a sad day when you have to throw out the condoms on your bedside table because more than half of them have expired. <laughs> and I decided to replace them with magnums because, you know the old saying, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. <laughs> <laughs> I can say I actually did meet a really nice woman right before New Year's. And like we hit it off great. We had a fantastic night. However, I did discover a couple of things. First of all, 45 is too old to fornicate on futon. <laughs> and the second is I do not story. have the voice for dirty talk. <laughs> 
Like, you sound sexy here. It's supposed to be low. Kind of slow, control. Let's get it on. I sound more like a high school guidance counselor. Can you like that? How does that make you feel? It's okay to cry. But we did exchange numbers. We're having a great night. We're texting. We're sending pictures back and forth for the entire week. I actually took my first dick pic because, you know, they said the camera adds weight. <laughs> and like, she was telling me everything I wanted to hear. She was saying I was funny, that I needed those magnums. <laughs> <laughs> and then she invited me to church. Yeah, up comes the uh, nice conversation that I'm not only an honorary member of the uh, fellow of the Richard Dawkins Foundation, very much an atheist. Oh. She responds with, oh, okay. Ghosted. Or in this case, I'm thinking Father, Son, and the Holy Ghosted. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to take the last refuge of the single man, you know, internet porn. <laughs> And I discovered that uh, after doing a little bit of surfing on vintage Pornhub, that my grandma did a skin flick in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what's, what's more uh, concerning. Finding out your grandma did porn, or using that as the motivation for a strong finish. <laughs> <laughs> my name is John Taylor. <laughs> <laughs>